This week we've been talking about the history of the SKA from its earliest beginnings up until the time of the site decision in the middle of 2012. We've been very fortunate in being able to bring most of the key players, the people who actually made the history, are in this room or in this building um, and they're telling us about their memories of why things happened, well what happened first of all, why it happened and what their thoughts were about it all. First thoughts were in the late 1980s and that led to uh, a couple of years later to the formation of a large telescope working group and that was the start as we look at it now for the SKA. It's change beyond recognition. What people were talking about very early on was the total collecting area, one squ million square meters, and that was needed to detect neutral hydrogen in the very distant universe. The ways of actually producing that for a, a, a small price, that was what kept people busy and there was some very innovative stuff that was uh, thought about technically in those early years. Radio astronomers have always worked together in terms of exchanging technology, exchanging people, going backwards and forwards. And the first thing you think about when you think about a big project is who do I know in different countries that can help us with this? It was always a big project. And as we went on through the, through the decades, we've understood what it does actually mean to, to work globally together with a single focus and produce a telescope or several telescopes in a single observatory. In a project like this, you have different cultures of doing things, different cu cultures of making decisions, you have different uh, decision cycles, funding cycles, and there's a lot to understand about the people you're working with in order to really uh, get something uh, out the end. And that, I think, has enriched all of us who've worked in the SKA. 